Okay, hello and welcome everyone to Network Programmability Lab stream. This is Dmitry and we are starting yet another stream. Uh, today will be part 14th um, of Network Programmability Lab and the main agenda for today is Napalm. Uh, we are going to talk about Napalm, Napalm when we are going to start, but before as usual, a couple of announcements. So, uh, the first announcement is that uh, our contest that I announced last time is still ongoing and it will be ongoing for at least a couple of weeks more. Um, so, you can win uh, this printed copy of Cisco Software Defined Access Book. Uh, and uh, if you haven't watched previous stream where I announced it, I will repeat briefly the rules. So the idea here is that uh, you let me know, tell me, tell me some story about if, if the stream changed your life somehow or you maybe started using some stuff that I wrote uh, on the stream at your work or maybe it encouraged you to, to start learning network automation on your own. Uh, so uh, this is a one way to win the book, another way is to give me a very good idea that I, I could cover on one or, or up to two streams. So it's around six hours total. So, and um, it shouldn't be obviously like, hey, could you cover technology X? I, I'm thinking about more, some real use case, something that you would like to have uh, and um, something that you would like to see me doing live on the stream. And so it should obviously have more details than just let's cover technology X. So uh, describe to me what you would like to see. Uh, and this could be another way to win the book. So out of all of the emails, either is some impressions about the streams or how it impacted your life or whatever, or some good idea for the stream, um, I will select one winner and I will ship the book to him or, or to her. All of your submissions please send to the email address below in the Twitch description um, and make sure you mar mark somehow that this email is for contest. Okay, so it should be contact at tmfigle.me. Perfect, so this is the first announcement. Um, Second one is PyCon US is next week. It starts on, well, officially it starts on uh, Thursday evening, but uh, there, are, there is some st stuff which will be before that. I'm going to be there. So I'm flying to, to Ohio next week, uh, to Cleveland. Uh, so if you are at PyCon, let, Please let me know so we could meet and and talk and connect in real world. I think that would be awesome. Um, so with PyCon it also means that we will definitely not have the next stream next Sunday. And uh, we will not have stream in two weeks either. Because of that, um, in, you know, I really... I really hate missing our Sunday streams. So because of that, most likely uh, in uh, two weeks from now on some on some working day like Tuesday uh, or Wednesday. So it's around 22nd or 23rd of May. We will have out of schedule stream. Uh, I haven't decided yet. Obviously, it will be I will just decide closer uh, closer to those dates, probably when I return. So like you will see an announcement or Twitter on Twitter and probably via Twitch as well uh, that I have uh, another stream on one of those days. Uh, so keep that in mind um, if you will be waiting for the stream next to Sundays. Uh, another, another news is that um, my sessions on our in session catalog uh, for Cisco Life US, and I'm going to open it up right now. And you know, just just a minute of some self promotion here. Uh, 
just uh, give me one second. Okay, so this is uh, Cisco Life US Session Catalog and if you search for my last name, which is uh, Figol, F-I-G-O-L, you will see all of the sessions that I'm somehow involved uh, in. So um, there will be one on machine learning, 30 minute session, uh, very brief introduction on what that is. Uh, there, there will be, from my perspective, among all of my sessions, this will be the most interesting one, uh, which is uh, this one, the second one, make your know, make Python application faster with I think IO. So um, I haven't haven't really seen a lot of people in network industry using I think IO yet, but this is a very great technique to uh, to have your Python application run extremely fast. Um, and it really fits into how we do stuff in networking where we have to connect to a bunch of networking devices and do something either config or get some commands or whatever um, so this technique called I think IO uh, you and we, we, we had an example on one of the first streams by the way so if you're interested to, to have a brief idea what it is go, go back to stream like second or third or something like that um, but it's a very great technique to make your application really fast and it's especially relevant in networking where we may have thousands of network devices. So um, yeah, this is something new. Uh, I haven't seen anything like that on Cisco Live before. So I'm, um, I'm excited to, to be able to present this stuff. There will be also two more where I will be kind of like a proctor, mostly I will not be a main speaker. So one of them is bring your own tech engineer. Um, this is a library of Python scripts that is running directly on networking device. And it's written by uh, two tech engineers, by um, an ex-colleague of mine and me when I was still working in tech. Um, we will be showing why and how to use it and what you can get in return uh, by using Onbox Python. So for this session, I will not be main speaker. And then there will be also another one, uh, Python for network and uh, enterprise network elements. And this is basically how different ways how you can use Python to interact with networking devices, um, stuff like uh, Connecting my SSH, netconf, restconf, uh, obviously with, with uh, emphasis on Python. Again, I will be uh, mainly helping on this session. I will not be a main speaker. Um, I was delivering this session on Cisco Live US last year. Um, and then there will be a last one, uh, which is on Monday, and this is eight hours lab. Um, Enterprise SDN Advanced Network uh, Network Programming Hands-On with two more um, amazing people, amazing engineers, Bruno and Joe. Um, so that, that such session is paid, uh, but in this session um, you have a chance to discover different different ways to interact with uh, is um, Cisco Enterprise devices. Um, so there will be directly with device interaction, there will be stuff like um, DNA center, chat, chat ops, and a lot of cool stuff. Um, so if you're interested in getting your hands dirty and learning something, check, check this session out. That said, I don't remember if there are any free spots left on that session. Okay, so this is brief announced, well, brief. <laughs> couple of minutes of self-promotion um, so and definitely if you're going to Cisco Life US again let me know let, let's meet let's uh, let's connect uh, let's talk about some uh, network program programmability or whatever it is interesting for for you um, come and say hi uh, the last one is, um, is something that I heard uh, yesterday um, 
there is a new Python new Python um, automation framework out. It's called Brigade. Uh, so if you uh, Google for this, I uh, think Brigade Python automation framework. So a friend of mine sent me the link because I, I don't really follow the news, but uh, let me see if this will work. Yeah, so this, this is a project and um, I do not know much about it. I like I haven't I haven't played with this. But as far as I understood the idea here is to be able to use uh, to use uh, this framework to automate a bunch of tasks on a number of devices using Python. And like the first impression that I had is um, it's well, very similar to what Ansible is trying to accomplish. But again, I haven't touched it myself, so I do not know. That's uh, that. So maybe we'll cover it on the stream once. Um, maybe not. Um, depending on depending if I will find it interesting or not. But uh, it's developed by the same guy. Uh, it's developed by uh, the same guy who developed Napalm, which will be a focus of today's session. So David David Barroso. Uh, let me see who else. And this guy as well, Patrick from Sweden. Um, so yeah, um, check it out if this is interesting for you. Um, and I think that's pretty much it with announcements. Um, and let's let's switch to the lab and for agenda for today. So as I told you before, I broke my I broke my usual Genesis 3 server when I upgraded it to 18.4 uh, Ubuntu, uh, and I can't use uh, KVM machines anymore. So I really I had to find something else uh, find something else before the stream and um, and make sure um, make sure there is some tools and some virtual machines that I could use uh, so let me bring up my Gina 3 so I kind of rebuilt the topology of uh, uh, of Gina 3 uh, of network programmability labs that we used previously uh, it's very similar, it's not 100% exact and there are not all the same images that are used. Um, so, well, that's that we'll, we'll try working with this. So, uh, here I have, um, I have iOS switches and iOS routers and I have ISXE routers. Uh, honestly, I really wanted to add some other vendors here. However, um, there is well, there was one problem is that because I didn't have a lot of time, I was trying to do my best to transfer some of the images, but uh, some of them are like two gigs and more, so that didn't work out well. Um, so I think. I'm still uploading the Juniper VMX and I think that Arista uh, VEOS is uploaded but I haven't played with it so I'm not yet sure if it will just you know work or not. I think we could try uh, and see. Um, so I will try adding, uh, adding it but uh, again I'm, I'm not sure it will work out just fine. So let me try Arista. I will just put it on the side. It will be my what? Um, let's see. And 
and let's uh, duplicate another PC. <clears throat> Cannot duplicate node while it's running. Okay. Um, let me stop this one. Duplicate PC3. Start. Okay. So let me connect this one. Uh, yeah, but again, I will try running it, this, but I have no clue if it's uh, it's going to be run. If not, I will just, you know, drop it for today and I will try to arrange it for the next time. Uh, okay, so let's say it's ASW3. And I need to connect the management port somewhere. Okay, so let me start it and let's see if this works. Well, some something started, but we'll see. Uh, okay. So yeah, I have my backup server here, which is called Emerald. I really like the names names of my mineral stones. Uh, so my my main one is sapphire, which right now is not really working well. Uh, okay, so let me connect to CSR. By the way, uh, since um, well, since I had to since I had to switch the whole thing. Uh, to like new server I also upgraded the CSRs so right now they're running 1681A is very, the very latest image actually I'm interested if they added telemetry oh I think they did actually they finally added telemetry on CSR perfect so I, actually this means that on one of the streams I can cover Telemetry. Or no. <laughs> I will I would need to check check with developers if uh, telemetry is already on CSR or not. Um okay. That's alright. So yeah the main the main problem is that all of these devices right now don't have any kind of config because literally I had to do my best to build any kind of lab before the stream uh, so we are going to limit the scope of the lab as much as possible to make sure we have enough devices just to showcase uh, napalm and yeah before before I before I will do some con some manual configuration stuff uh, let me first describe to you what napalm is or again i also will clarify that this will be the first time i am looking on napalm i haven't done anything with it this up until the stream uh so this will be for me very like first look without any you know it's not like i covered it uh during the week and i read everything about it and you know now I'm on the stream showing how easy it is. No, uh, in this case it will be very similar like with Ansible, where I had very limited experience with Ansible. And basically life we were uh, checking the docs, blocks to make sure we get it working. Let's see how painful this process is or not painful. Uh, so, what is the idea behind Napalm? For the Previous streams, uh, I think for previous three streams, I I discussed l how Ansible is not perfect. <laughs> so the main problem is Ansible and network devices interaction is a network configuration state. 
So you can't, uh, whenever you apply the playbooks, especially if they involve any kind of CLI templates or netcons templates or whatever, it's extremely hard to um, have to control the state of network configuration. What I mean by that? The example that I really like to describe is Imagine you have VLANs 50 and 60 on configured on the device, okay? And they are, because you like to use Ansible, they are as part of the variables files in Ansible, okay? Um, now, you want to add VLAN 70, but you also want to delete VLAN 50. So, you change your variables, you delete the, the one for VLAN 50 and you change it to 70 or add at VLAN 70 and if you apply and if that was a CLI template or a netconf template without too much of a thought you will end up with VLANs 50, 60, 70 on the switch okay uh, this is the first example so you wanted to have VLAN 60 and 70 but you ended up with VLANs 50, 60, 70 because your template says to configure VLAN you have to say VLAN and VLAN number right which is essentially a merge operation um, so this is one problem another problem is what happens if you configure something on device not from Ansible right so maybe you had your proper variables in Ansible and whatever but then you someone uh, went uh, directly to the switch and configured a bunch of VLANs there manually right depending on the use case you may want to have only something that is configured via your configuration management tool uh, because otherwise you lose any kind of control over what is going on on the device um, so network configuration state is essentially a problem right now is network automation uh, it's uh, it's a complex problem to solve don't get me wrong because all of the vendors implement their um, configuration in different way um, so um, yeah it's it's not like it's an easy problem to solve but it is a problem a lot of people are trying to solve it by different means in um, for example the way Ansible is trying to solve this is that they write a new modules for every features for example for VLANs um, and what these modules do, they go on the device, they check what VLANs are there and they compare it to what you want to configure and then they apply necessary cleanup operations for VLANs that got deleted. Um, the problem with that approach is those modules are, you know, they don't have a lot of functionality and the second you want to configure something uh, that is not in that um, that is not in that module. Let's say you were using ISL2 interface, which can configure port on the switch in uh, as access in some VLAN or trunk or whatever. But the second you want to apply something else, like you want to apply spanning tree port fast on the interface, or you would like to apply QoS, or you would like to apply I don't know, private VLAN or whatever it is, or maybe dot one X, right? Any of the features that is not covered by module, you will have to fall back to the templates, either CLI or netconf based templates. This means that essentially you can control the network configuration state anymore, or you will have to write your own modules, which is a, a, not an extremely easy task to do, by the way. Um, there are other tools that solve it in different way. Um, one of them is I mentioned for some for some time already, uh, and um, again I think I mentioned it for at least three streams uh, streams or so. So the uh, it's called uh, Cisco NSO network uh, network what services orchestrators something like this. The idea there is. Um, NSO goes to the devices for uh, using the plugins that their team wrote or that you wrote on your own, 
uh, and by the way they have plugins for a lot of Cisco and non-Cisco devices. So these plugins go to the device and they get the current um, running config either as CLI or as a netconf based and they convert it to uh, some abstraction yank model or um, yeah, basically to, to another yank model which is abstraction um, for multiple vendors. This is, this is not like vendor dependent um, yank model anymore. And they save any kind of changes in the local database. Uh, and whatever you want to configure something else, something new or change something, you will interact via NSO, you will say, well, I would like to have VLANs um, 60 and 70. It will compare your intent uh, of VLAN 60 and 70 with what was already in their database. And let's say it was VLANs 50 and 60 and it will apply uh, automatically necessary cleanup procedures um, to the config, again, via either CLI-based um, config or netconf based. They will do that and they will essentially, they essentially have a way to control the state of network configuration and they convert the full config that is present on the device. Um, so you don't need to write any templates. You can just go ahead and use it if you have a proper plugin. Now, what Napalm does is, from my understanding, and again, I haven't touched the tool, so this is just what I heard, you know? We will confirm this today, but um, uh, as far as I understood, Napalm is very similar attempt uh, to do stuff like NSO. Um, it's a little bit limited. Again, as far as I understood is that it can do only CLI based stuff. Um, and they do not support 100% of config on the devices. And also, as far as I know uh, right now, there is no um, there's just a bunch of vendors supported, not not a lot of them. I think Juniper, Arista, Cisco, and I don't remember if someone else is supported, but again, I could be wrong, okay? Because I haven't touched the tool, I just, you know, um, right now I'm talking about my first perception from what I read, um, but yeah, I could be wrong. So this is a background about Napalm. Uh, Napalm is written in Python and um, there are, you can interact with just CLI based or with Python library or with, uh, there is a plugin for Ansible to do Napalm. Um, but yeah, we'll start with, with whatever they have in the docs. Okay, I think that's, that's uh, enough of uh, talking, me talking, and let's actually do some useful stuff. Let me see the status of the devices. So I see, uh, okay, this router seems to be fine. It got an IP address. Um, ESW3, this one, I don't know. I have, I see CLI of Arista, but I don't remember the, um, the default credentials. Let me see if I can find them. Let's do GNA3 registry. Uh, appliances, Vista. directory and open my Visual Studio code. Okay. 
let's see. Uh, no, I don't see here anything in the description. Let's continue digging. The login is admin with no password by default. Okay. Let's try doing that. Admin. Okay. Okay, so I don't think it worked out well uh, and the reason why I say this is that I only see a management interface. That's definitely not a good sign. By the way, this is my first time I have ever tried um, Arista. So I'm just I'm, I'm doing some random stuff, uh, <laughs> trying to mimic what I usually do on Cisco devices. I know that CLI is very similar, but it's not 100% similar, so um, excuse me for my uh, lack of my Arista knowledge here. Okay, let's try. Uh, host name is W3. Okay, that worked out fine. Uh, I need to get an IP address, uh, no shot IP address. Look at this, the same comments. Uh, okay, I don't need to do show. And by default they have MST, MST zero. Hmm. So, this may mean that I will have to configure MST. Okay, interface is up. The main name. Wow. <laughs> CLI is so similar. Okay. This part didn't work out though. Wow, I got an IP address. Okay. You know what? Let me just quickly find Arista SSH config. Because honestly, for today, the only thing I really need to have is um, is a username uh, and SSH access. Oh, and by the way, let me pull up my pie charm here and increase the font size. Guys, let me know if you have any questions, some, some things that you would like to know. I will be happy to stop and talk to you. Uh, okay, let me find... I forgot what was my default set of credentials for this lab. Mm, admin, admin, okay.
Okay, SSH enabled by default. Shows default. Okay, I think I have to configure the user. Okay, user admin. And whenever ZTP is not being used, user can uh, access switch CLI through the console port only. The default username is admin, no password. Default co admin configuration is... Once logged in with admin user by default, this will place us in exact mode or privilege level 1. Okay. So let's try doing that. Username admin privilege level privilege 15. Now it's the secret. Tiska? Oh, no. <laughs> Not Tiska. <laughs> let's do admin. Uh, okay. And let's also have enabled secret admin. I don't need reduce. Um, hmm. I have access to bash. Okay. Uh, SSH access control. No, we don't need that. We don't need SNMP. Configure min management VRF. Okay, I am going to configure management VRF because I really like separating the management network for everything else. So let's actually do it. So the say VRF definition management. Uh, you assign some RD value. Okay, awesome. Just it's deprecated. So why? Why it's here? Okay. RF uh, forwarding management. Okay. So show IP in brief. Uh, uh huh. Okay, also config is gone. So I need to. I need to do this. I need to define. I need to redefine this. W1, CSW2, and three access layer switches, and three PCs. So here I have, what, I have eight devices. Yeah, I will have to change that. So let's say switches will start from 20 and up. Routers will start with with 10 and up. Okay, so we'll have one, two, three, one, two, one. Okay, so uh, let's say this one will be 20, 21, 22, 23, 20, let's say 4, 25. Let's uh, configure it manually. I think the subnet was 122. Correct. Okay. So it will be IP address. Um, <clears throat> IP address 
192, 168, 122, uh, 23, slash 24, no shot. Okay. So I should be able to ping the RF management 192, 168, 122, 1. Check out. Okay. So, uh, as a last step, okay, I have it here on the on the uh, VR VR zero. So I should be able to ping one ninety two one sixty eight one two two one ah, twenty three. Okay, this looks good to me. So I should be able to uh, SSH to this device. Yes, uh, admin. Okay. Interesting. Uh, the pre this privilege didn't really work when I when I logged in. Okay. I can at least SSH. Okay, this one is fine. Let's configure CSR with static IP address as well. Okay, I don't really like this song. Let's switch this to something else. I think, it's, um, I think SSH should log in, should work by default. Oh, sorry, I noticed this late. Yeah, it seems to be that it is by default. Okay, so let's also do some basic configuration here. So this will be BR1 uh, IP domain name tnfigle.me uh, VRF, uh, VRF management, no, uh, VRF definition management um, Actually no on Cisco it should be VRF definition and management with big letter. Uh, address family IPv4, address family IPv6. And I am doing it wrong. <laughs> okay. Okay, VRF definition. Let, let's remember some CCA skills. Um, so address family IPv4, address family IPv6, um, IP domain, name, configure me, host name I have to add, <clears throat> and then 1vty0.15, uh, it's also username, admin, password, privilege, privilege 15, password, admin, and ETY transport, input all, transport, preferred, non, uh, privilege level 15. Okay. And a crypto key generate RSA modules 248 and also an IP address, so let's say gigabit one. Uh, depending on the device, I will may need to say no switch port, IP address 192, 168, 122. It's 211. And no. VRF forwarding and management and no shots. Okay, I still remember how to do config in, in the notepad. That's a good sign. Even though I don't have to do it often now. Okay, so no switch port didn't work here, but that's all right. Uh, okay.
let's also do and and wr okay so now you have 12 and another uh, br This work out fine. Now with this guy, I don't remember what this one is supposed to. Oh, I think I remember. This is supposed to be trunk everywhere. Uh, I think I will actually add config here manually. Actually, no, I will add it via via Napalm later. So the management port here is zero zero. So let's do this. So interconnect switch one. Uh, blah 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 blah. No switch port. E zero zero. And this is supposed to be 20. Okay, let's see. Hmm, something didn't work. Is there a three less number of VTUI lines? Minus y zero what nine four okay okay this part works let's continue so is w one What's left? Uh, two core routers. I don't think I will touch ISP routers today. So two core routers as well. Core switches, excuse me. Uh, so CSW1. <clears throat> so this will be what? Let's make it 26. Or no, let's just start with the next one this one will be 31 uh, okay okay this seems to be working and the last one 232. So if I did everything correctly, now I should be able to connect from my um, from my server to every of these devices. So let's actually check this. So I should be able to connect to eleven. Yes. Uh, admin. This is not a good sign. <laughs> Did they put Cisco instead of admin? No, 
What sort of this admin here? Username admin privilege level 15, password admin show run section line, transfer input all. Oh, I'm I'm an idiot. Uh, login local. Let's do this. Lock session uh, and lock session this one. Command window. And T. interesting that uh, my routers didn't really like that on the console, both of them. Hmm. This is not a good sign. <laughs> Because I'm locked on the console now. Let's try connecting again. But I don't think it will change anything. Not good. Okay. Re let's reload those two and let's continue checking other devices. So 20 should work. So the NAT is wo working, but I need SSH. Yes, admin. Okay. 21 is working. 22. working 23 is working 20 no 31 is working and 32 is working and by the way let me try fixing this control H it's so annoying and I encountered it multiple times um, delete shown as Thank you. 
Backspace sends the lead in the map keys. How did I miss missed that? Backspace sends the lead. This one. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, so, where are all my borders? So now I should be able to SSH to them as well. Hey Quentin, thank you. I think it's all right, except the fact that uh, I broke my usual lab server. Besides that, I think it's all right. Okay, so I have SSH access everywhere um, and I have the main focus for today will be around Cisco switch, uh, Cisco SXE router, and I think Arista switch. Nice. Okay, so I think we're ready to start here uh, and not to deal with my lab setup issues. So let's see, GitHub Napalm Automation. Okay, before using a library, please read documentation. Pip install, install Napalm. Uh, there is Napalm Ansible module. Okay. Let's start with docs and see how it goes. Napalm is vendor neut neutral cross-platform open source project that provides unify API. Okay, Ansible sold Stackstorm. Oh, Jeremy. Okay, <laughs> stars on the GitHub. Okay. Um, Okay, so the core developer team, so this guy, David, he's, um, he's also developer of that Brigade tool that I showed you. This guy, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name correctly, Mir Sea. Um, I do not know much what he's, uh, uh, about him, but I follow him on Twitter, since he works at Cloudflare, and Kirk is developer of... Um, of NetMiko, and he also has his own Python Ansible courses. Okay, welcome to Napalm documentation. Napalm read the docs.io. Okay, supported Arista, EOS, Cisco S, Juniper Junos. Uh, by the way, let me see if my Junos, if my Junos image got upgraded. Yes, it did. Um, I don't think I will waste too much of a time today on Junos, depends depends how it goes, because I don't remember how do you have to connect um, the forwarding engine with, um, with routing engine for Juniper images, um, 
and I don't want to waste my time on that. So for today, we are going to focus on this router here, I guess. Let's say core switch one, maybe ISW one as well. And this Arista switch ASW3. Okay, let's actually write down the year IP addresses. So PR1 is 192.168.122.11. ISW1 um, is 192.168.122.20. Then we have CSW1, this is 20, this is 31, and then we have this one, Arista switch, which is 23. Okay, so these four devices, we are going to focus on that. Um, so yeah, let's continue looking on the docs, what they tell. Okay, so first they tell us, you need to install using pip install, uh, pip install Napalm. So there is one problem uh, is that because this is my new server, it doesn't have Python 3, um, the latest version of Python 3. So like 3.6, let's actually install 3.6. There was this guy, this one, Jonathan F, who maintains the repo. So let's add the repo, update, and we will need to install Python 3, and we will need to install Python 3.6, Python 3.6 pip as well. Maybe by let's just do it like this. Yes. Okay, I don't think. Python 3.6 minus and pip. I don't think pip will be there. Right. Uh, do they have easy install? Easy install? No module named easy install. This is that PPA agent an F version. Python get pip script, let's see. Good for you for being paranoid, nice. Okay, I will just not, I will stop wasting my time and I will just do Python 3, sudo Python 3, get pip. That's new. Can't import name sysconfig. Um, let's 
see if this will help. This does not make sense to me. Python 3.6 is working, but Python 3.6 get pip can't import package name. Okay, now it worked. It was supposed to work. Okay. Sudo make me sandwich, please. Okay, so pip is up now. Uh, which pip3? Yeah. <clears throat> so let's uh, do Python 3.6 mvnf. Uh, Oh no, I will need to install the package. But I have to get install Python 3 VM. Python 3.6 minus M, VN, uh, virtual ENVs, net box. I think I already had this error, but I don't remember what I'm, I was supposed to do with this. Oh, okay. Now it's supposed to work. Okay, so Python. 3, 6, minus M, VN, virtual ENVs, uh, net DevOps, perfect, so now I can source, virtual ENVs, net DevOps, and I can say Python, no, uh, it will be pip install, uh, napalm, let's also do net Miko. Ansible as well, Payank, what else, um, let's see, okay, okay, 
Okay, let's see on the do let's see the docs. Okay, from Napalm import get network driver. Okay, I think I need to create already a new directory. Scripts uh yeah let's do let's create a new directory napalm uh let's do what let's create file sandbox sandbox py and let's see if there are any comments isn't python minus mp list works without pip installation ah uh, no it doesn't so Unless you have pip installed, it will not work. Okay, could not install setup tools. Wow. Oh, you know what? I am an idiot. Um, so, VNF is required if you install Python through um, both VNF and PIP are required if you install Python from different repo. So if you don't install it from default Ubuntu repo, then you must uh, then you must install VNF and PIP separately. Unfortunately, everything else you can install then via PIP. Uh, okay, I am an idiot here because I did not do pin activate so let's do this pip install minus u pip um, by yank by, by yank napalm um, ansible net miko requests This may fail because I forgot to install the setup tools. Damn it. Let's see. Okay, uh, while it's loading, let's try. Um, From Napalm get network Okay, I will also need to install uh, locally So that I have auto completion Okay, I don't have Yes, I don't have uh, build essentials and GCC I think and leap open SSL but I don't for I forgot how the package is called <coughs> Ubuntu how do I install OpenSSL? LeapSSL, I think. No, not this one. Ubuntu install cryptography fails. Okay. On.
Interesting. Okay, I don't. I think I just don't have GCC. GCC. No, it says it's new version. Let's also install sudo pip install. Install you setup tools list utils. Okay, it, it complains about OpenSSL clearly. Okay, let's just try sudo get install OpenSSL. OpenSSL is the newest version. Yeah, so it was, I need to install Python 3.6 dev. Okay, so now the whole thing is supposed to work. So let's start. So they say from Napalm import get network driver. Get network driver, let's say iOS. Okay. Tutorials outline install required tools, create a virtual lab is a vista device, manual apply config to the device using Napalm, driving Napalm through Python code. This tutorial doesn't fully cover uh, Napalm is unsupple, blah blah blah. Okay. okay, I already did that. 
setting up the lab uh, using Vagrant no thanks programming samples common interface and mechanism to push and retrieve data this method is very useful in combination with tools like Ansible assume No, just replacing config, no thanks. Uh, I don't know, aha, <laughs> Rista config, why would I want to have this as a first, first step? First step manipulating config. Okay, uh, this one I'm willing to try. So we have IS, so let's do... Um, Let's do is driver is equal to uh, underscore. So is driver is now their driver, and we should say device connection connection is equal to driver uh, in IP address. So we would use the router uh, and admin and admin. Driver is not defined. Oh, okay. This is IS driver, obviously. IS driver. Okay. So device connection open. Okay. Replace. This is strange. No offense, guys, but look. The, the main selling point of Ansible is we provide an abstraction layer to interact with devices in a neutral way. And the first two examples are Hey, give us your config file and we will replace it for you. Um, what? <laughs> no offense, guys. Um, Okay, we will copy these two parts, though, maybe all three parts, by the way. We will copy to our, like, samples. Um, this one. Frosthammer, hello, how are you doing? Okay, this is this part is something that I, I think I'm willing to try. As they say, lot merge, merge candidate. Okay, I think I will have to actually switch back to uh, to Arista. So let's do Arista device will be no this will not work that way. So let's do Arista driver is equal to get network driver EOS. Okay. So now Arista switch will be driver 192 192, 168, 122, uh, 23, admin, admin, uh, I can edit that mistake, so this will be a Arista driver, and now I think we can try load merge, the merge candidate, the same way they propose me to do, so Arista switch, 
a lot merge candidate config no host name I can do description uh, let's actually do description here on some port on Ethernet 12 I have um, to face Ethernet Ethernet 12 I will have mm, it's a new line okay I will have description connected to PC3 Wow. Oh, okay. Uh, because I need to open a connection first. Open. Socket error during EAPI connection. Connection refused. This is interesting. The IP address is correct, but I think I need to enable Arista Arista eAPI. Let's try. Enable Arista eAPI. Let's see management API HTTP commands. Let's try first seeing what is default. Unlock session. Okay, enabled no. Okay. So uh, management API HTTP commands are uh, no shot. And let's see. Okay, enabled yes. Okay, so. I guess now I should be able to open connection and I still can't. Okay. Enabled yes, HTTP server running. HTTP server shut down. Okay, just maybe they use HTTP by default. Alright guys, I, I like the HRP name mod by the way. Um, okay, let's see. So it should be protocol HTTP. Okay, so maybe also we'll need local HTTP server. I don't know. And Okay, I know what it is. It's not, it's, it's different VRF. It's management VRF. It's VRF, management. No shot. Okay, so maybe this will work. Okay, let's try again. CLI command one of two enable failed permission to run command denied. <laughs> so much for the tutorial. will need to go back to their vagrant example.
I think I will need to go to Docs for the driver and try to understand what is going on there. Uh, because what I see, I don't like it. Have you have you configured enable secret and Arista? I don't know. Yeah, it seems to be here. Let me try. Let's try opening this again. Nope. Still doesn't work. Okay, I need. I definitely need to get to to see what are the what are the parameters that you can pass. Napalm driver, hostname, username, password, optional arcs. Okay, I may need to run optional arcs, but I need to know what that is. You know what, let's try one of two. Maybe I also have to, like, uh, let's see, there is an issue on GitHub. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Guys, what, please. Never do something like this. You open an issue on GitHub. You find you find an answer. You don't post an answer and you close your issue. There is another issue on Crunchable. I may need to go directly to the Napalm GitHub. Let's try finding the... the driver.
Okay, there is at least one optional argument called transport. And another one get transport. So transport is HTTPS and port 443. But th those both of them are default ones. Okay. And then they're using Pi EAPI client connect. And I think this is where I hit an issue. Right. So from their library. Host username, password, port, timeout, transport. And they actually run show clock. So enable and show clock. Line 94, enable PVD. Hmm, thank you. Uh, let's try. If self device is non connection, not. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, let's check this. Arista disable. Um, no, Lo log in via SSH directly to privilege 15. Disable enable. No, oh, that was the joke. Okay. Just for the test, I'm going also to do this. Um, it's the username, username Arista, privilege 15, secret, secret Arista. And let's also do SSH Arista at 192, 168, 122, 23. Arista. Okay, we also end up in. Oh, okay. So I also end up not uh, in privilege one. Uh, enable privil. Let's do Arista. Enable privilege. 15 via default SSH login. Okay, let's try going to <clears throat> management SSH authentication log level login 
so maybe login post key cipher login no authentication not password no To allow privilege 15 to be effective, you need to enter the following command. Of course. Right. Okay, I guess I need to add this to my notes somewhere. Okay, so allegedly now it's supposed to work. Actually, I'm going to write this directly in the code. Uh, The driver will be get network driver EOS. Uh, let's do IS driver like this. Uh, Arista switch will be. Switch Name, username, password. So let's do this. Um, arms. <coughs> this will be one ninety two, one sixty eight, one two two, twenty three. Username will be admin password will be admin 
Okay. Okay, so Arista switch will be Arista driver and Arista switch params and Arista switch open and then I was trying to push some config but I don't remember the command. Candidate and let's do config will be something like this. Have interface Ethernet twelve description connected to PC three. Okay. So config config and then print. Uh, Arista switch compare config. Okay, let's see how this works. Uh, right now, we will just copy this. No. And look at this. This seems to be working. Okay. So this part is fine compare and then you can commit okay so device uh, no arista switch commit config okay and here it is okay This part seems to be working. Let's continue. Commit, discard, rollback changes. I don't think rollback will now work because we already committed them. Oh no, if for some reason you commit it and you want to roll back. Okay, so this actually is supposed to work. This worked and at the very end I you need to run device uh, close okay. so Okay, you can also use uh, context manager. Okay, this is good. I like context manager. So uh, this right now will be changed to this drive no.
with Arista switch as Arista, with Arista driver, blah blah blah, as Arista switch, and then get facts and get interface counters. Okay, let's try this, why not? So, oh, and I don't need close and open anymore. Perfect. Uh, Okay, so still Python to examples. Okay, so probably if you already noticed, you see that these functions they are supposed to be vendor independent. So if I change a Rista switch to like iOS switch or some uh, something, this is still supposed to work. Um, okay, so I need to. Try this. Interesting. I have nothing to say. <laughs> oh, this is funny. My triple A command disappeared. Oh, because of rollback? Like, uh, wait. Arista right driver is not defined. Ah, oh, right. Uh, and this is incorrect, by the way. No, hold on. Okay, so facts are kind of like Ansible facts. FPGN vendor model, serial number, OS version, uptime, interfaces list. US driver has no attributes, get interface counters. Okay, it was supposed to be get interfaces counters. No 
Okay, so management one. Okay. So I guess this is very similar to if I do show interfaces management one. Okay, those are these different numbers here. Let's see if there is something interesting in the chat. Uh, so, there were a couple of interesting comments. Frosthammer is asking, you wouldn't need to add an empty string for a new line in the config push, would you? Um, I guess they add new line themselves, or their API supports it without new line. Um, you did roll back, maybe we also lost AAA. Yes, automation breaks the things. Yeah. Okay, so this part seems to be fine. Extend driver. example if you wanted to build a parser to filter your unique banner and return structured data from it you can extend the driver the positive side effect is that tools such as salt and civil netbooks implicitly have access to these methods Get driver method is simply looking for custom napalm os driver. Mm, Maxim, I don't think. My first impression is that it doesn't solve any new problem, the brigade. So, as of now, I'm not really excited. I think you can just use Ansible for that. Okay, from Napalm, IS, IS driver, get my customer. Okay, so they describe, okay, if you want to extend something that is not here, you can. Okay. So there are a couple of things that, like impressions about their dogs. Well, first, in some places there is still Python 2. Um, which is strange. Um, well, one of the very first examples in the tutorials is about replacing the config, which for me is like, no. I mean, you need to have your config file first to be able to do that, and it doesn't show the power of Napalm. I mean, Yeah, I have just, you know, I, I have doubt this should be a very first example that you would use Napalm to push your config. That's why I I have mixed feelings about including that as a first example. That said, I like this one, even though it's kind of like part of tutorials, which probably is not the right place for this, for like custom functionality. But I like that they have it here. Um, be probably because I already had Ansible experience with custom modules where the dogs are just the worst. Um, here they actually walk you through how, how to do this. Here is an example of the code. Here is, they say, okay, if you want to parse your own banner, um, we can show you how you can do this. And they walk you through like from very first step here to the very last step where you actually run this custom functionality so kudos for that page even though I, I think it just doesn't really belong to this tutorials page which people go through when they first see the tool like myself so like on your first day you probably don't need to do this but at least they have it and it seems it seems good 
uh, you can uh, get your stuff up and running. Okay, you have tried you have tried the main pieces of Napalm using Napalm get set div configuration of device manually. Okay, Vagrant destroy. Okay. And then there is Napalm Ansible. Probably this Napalm Ansible is for the next time. I would like to, to try to see what they have. Uh, side notes. Um, let's do cover napalm ansible, and let's also do NTC ansible. This will be for future. Get another. Another thing that I don't like about this docs example is they walk you through one device. And again, the main like selling point of this whole thing is we are vendor neutral. So okay, right now we will not cover and uh, napalm answer. Let's go further. Uh, writing validator files. Okay, they say we can build a compliance report for you. This is kind of interesting. Oh, this is not meant to validate state. Not, not the configuration, because this is something configured. Doesn't mean it looks as you want. I don't want to do validation right now, it's too early. And we have here YCLI. Why is this? This is an in, this is interesting to validate state. You can easily check the WGP when neighbors are configured and the state is up. Okay, again, another thing with this doc is I would like to see different examples how you can manipulate config in vendor neutral way and it's not there, and it's not here they give you an example hey we can push a configuration for you if you want but this is vendor dependent this has nothing to do with vendor neutral so yeah so <laughs> This is kind of strange as well, but okay, let's keep going. Supported, uh, supported matrix. This is you can get structured data. Okay, they do merge on iOS. Okay, this is a little bit more interesting. So let's do get ARP table, for example. And 
and I'm going to change this example a little bit. I don't like context manager here because I would like to do some additional stuff via CLI. So I need to redo this. something didn't work oh okay because I need a restart switch open okay nothing in the ARP table Get ARP table method returns a list. Okay, no VRF support, perfect. Okay, let's um, not to waste too much time. I'm going to configure this port in some VLAN 30. Let's do this team series zero. P address, let's say 10, 10, 10. to Arista here. So switch port access will on 30 uh, and then interface will on 30, no shot, IP address 10 10 to the IP address 10 10 30 1 Okay So I should be able to ping and 31 okay which I can so our table here should be populated and I go back and now I can get it but again no no VRF here mm. okay See if there are any comments. Nope. Okay, let's continue. I still have like 25 minutes. Okay, get ARP, get BGP config, get config. I'm interested about get config. Is this going to be structured or not? This should be interesting. Get Mm. 
um, let's do import JSON, print JSON dumps. Um, Okay, this is just a bunch batch of config. Not impressed here. Get fax, okay, get let's do get interfaces IP. Okay, this is structured. That's fine. Um Let's also do Let's configure here trunk uh, on BR1 and BR2 and SW1 Okay, this is gig 2 and these ports are 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0 and 1, 1, okay. Okay, now on BR1, I say you could be two, 200, <clears throat> encapsulation dot 200, and let's say IP address 10, 10, 200, This didn't work. Um, Not cool.
Okay, something is not working on this switch one, I guess. I have U1 200. All VLANs are enabled. What else do I need? VLAN 200 exists. Well, I see ARP on the port. And marks are learned. And I see ARP. What? ARP is sent here, then ARP is forwarded on the correct port, but BR2 is not receiving this. That's funny. Okay, I am going to... Wrong cable.
Let's see what this guy has to say. I may need to restart the whole lap. I don't see any traffic passing by. can ping another switch, but not the router. Interesting.
Oh, not here. Ugh. <sighs> I can pink another switch just fine, but um, my routers, I can't pink them. This seems strange to me. I really wanted to test. I think I can try, try getting this switch. Config. Try if this will work. Okay, so we can see that this structure data is very similar to Arista, so they have the same format. Let's let's investigate more what they offer. Get into let's, let's try this. Um, print is switch. Oops.
Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see what is get environment. Hi there. <laughs> oh. Okay. I'm thinking if I should open. Okay, I think let's do something useful for community and open a bug. Um, I will need to see this IS PY file. Okay, so get show memory statistics. Mm, they look on IO memory in, uh, in show memory statistics. Okay, I just don't have IO memory. Probably because this is virtual device, probably I will not raise it back. Here, okay, let's continue. Get OTP neighbors get mark address table. Let's do get mark address table. Interesting what they do with is alive. Name pink is not defined. Oh. pink this is actually useful so parsing the result of commands like pink and trace route
Okay. They provide here a wrapper for load template, but meh. You can already do this with something like NetMiko. Set host name, set NTP peers, delete NTP peers, remove NTP peers from device configuration, SLA props. How about this? It says here, well, this ping clearly fails on switch one, but it has still success. This is a good idea. Um, when I first look on this, like this success is confusing though. Packet loss minus five. Props and zero. Hmm. There was actually a list of optional arguments, something that I was trying to find at the beginning. Okay, let's look more. So, okay, there is also a command line to get something. Let's try this. Uh, get interfaces. Okay. So napalm user admin password admin uh, vagrant Oh no, this was the password. So vendor, let's do EOS. Um, and we put an IP address 192.168.122.23. Call get mark address table. Hmm. Check installed packages, install packages, get install distributions. I think I will need to install it to the default. module pip has no attribute get installed distribution mm, okay i think i know what is happening check install packages um we are running pip version 10.01 Right, so I think there is no function like this and the code was not up updated for new pip. I even... <clears throat> I'm even willing to try you uh let's do nine zero three 
Okay. And let's try running Napalm again. Now, oh, here it is. Okay, so let's actually race a racer back. Uh, good citizens. Let's be good citizens for open source project. Okay, nine days ago updates. Fix remote S. Get environment. I'm looking on the days to make sure that it will, it's not already done. Enable get facts 16 days ago. Let me call Napalm. Is it working? Let's see this one. We've done broke their IP. Um, okay, I will just stop an issue. Zero one Napalm command line fails. It works fine. Let's continue. Okay, so this worked. Let's do the same thing for iOS switch. Um, core switch was 31 and vendor is iOS. Okay. This is also good. So actually, I like this part. I like this common command line to to quickly check what is going on on the device in structured way. Yeah, this seems interesting. This part main library. I'm not yet convinced. I would like to use that. Back mod. Okay, what? Let's see what they have for Yank. Napalm Yank. Hmm. 
Mm, they support only open config. Okay, I'm willing to try this as well. So it's also downgrade pip. I think this is part of Jinja. Interesting. Oh, it doesn't support Python Python two.
Let's check their docks again. This one is here. But it yells at me that there is no module named IP filters. Import IP filters. Hmm. I'm thinking it's because it's not using the proper dot notation like import dot IP filters Mm, okay, so they are planning this for, ze for 0 0.1 Honestly If in, to if in 2018 the module is not Python 3 ready uh, Just, you know, I don't want to Blame people, but I really want to <laughs>
Right. Where is this? Uh, where is this timer? Uh, this one year, seven months. Like, you know, for, in my case, uh, since, since early 2017, I don't use packages that do not support Python 3, like, okay, you, you don't have support for Python 3s then, you know, I will find something else or will write myself. Uh, you know, and I personally, for my own projects, I do Python 3.6. And even for, for like projects that are not my personal, I also try to push Python 3.6 so that you can take advantage of F strings. You can take advantage of async IO, um, all this uh, cool stuff. Okay, so let me briefly look on the and Napalm Ansible different modules. What what are here? Okay, so it's Napalm CLI, Diffyank. Okay, get facts, install config. Honestly, I am not really impressed. Um, I have seen, yes, I have seen a couple of articles on Python v7, but I don't use it yet. I saw something about data types, but I, I still need to, to be up to speed with that. I'm interested with breakpoint keyword. I think, um, it's very good. Um, I mean, import PDB, semicolon, PDB set, set trace is not end of the world. But if it's already built in and you don't have to import anything, I think it's much better. I have mixed feelings about um, about uh, function annotations, um, even though they are already in 3.6. I'm still not convinced um, that this is a the best way um but yeah i still need to to read more about some new python 3 sound stuff um okay parses configuration state and returns dict that so Honestly, yeah, I'm not impressed with what I see I have seen today and I went almost through everything here So what let, 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 let's do a summary because it's already more than three hours and we wrap up for today So what I liked is I like this command line tool uh, You know like it's very easy way to get something in structured way from the device. I think it, it's okay. That said, it's very similar to NetMiko tools that are out there. Um, NetMiko tools just do command and give you an output um, in similar way, but without parsing. So it basically depends if you need parsing on command lines and you can use this. If you don't need to um, use that. Um, what I didn't like, I didn't like that, that, um, no, let me continue what I also like. I like that there are some parsing stuff, like you can get interfaces, MAC address tables, uh, ARP tables. But then again, there are limitations almost on every step. Like 
use your refs, then you can get ARP table. Um, so, you know, I have mixed feelings about that. Uh, let me go back to this network driver and to see the whole list. Yeah. No, not here. Command line tool. No, support devices. Okay, support devices. So, like stuff like get ARP table, get environment, get facts, get interfaces, get. Most of these are kind of useful. But then again, if there is something that doesn't fall into this, um, you are out of luck. I definitely liked Pink and Tracer out here, even though the output also is a success thing. I have mixed feelings about that as well. Um, but anyway, this is a good to have like some operational level command to, for you to return the parsed output. So this part is okay. Maple Yank doesn't work on Python 3, so um, what can I say here? I was expecting something more. I was expecting that this can actually convert all stuff or some stuff, maybe not all, to structured data. Like, you can just say, like, parse running config for me and it will return uh, config in structured way for multiple devices. I did not see that. Um, another thing that I didn't like is that one of the first examples here is hey, uh, give us a config and we will replace or commit it for you. Uh, I don't think it's a good use case. There are other tools like NetMeek or something else that we will do the same thing for you. Um, so that part seems kind of strange, especially the first thing in the, uh, in the tutorial list. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what else? Let me think of something else. Samples. Uh, hmm. I liked this extend driver stuff, um, and that they have actually human readable uh, doc on this, like how you can actually do this. And they give an example from start to finish, like, hey, your banner contains some interesting data. Here is a way how you can extend the driver with your own function to include your own parsing. And this is how you can use this and this is what you will get. So having this kind of doc, you see it's like not big. It's uh, extremely useful not like an Ansible, you actually have to figure it out on your own. Um, Napalm Ansible, we didn't check it. Uh, that said, like using stuff like this pink module or something like this could be useful. I see that uh, you may actually need that instead of you implementing uh, on your own that stuff. Uh, what else? So, after I saw this, I see that Napalm is definitely not any kind of competitor to NSO because they do very different stuff and on much, much different level. So, um, um, at some point we will cover NSO on the stream. That said, NSO itself is much more complex system. It's, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a complex system. Um, what else? So probably for the next time we are going to... Oh, by the way, a lot of this functionality, a lot of functionality which is listed here, where is this, in supported devices, a lot of this get command that returns structured output, 
they are already implemented in network to code so if you look on network ntc templates they already have text fsm templates for a bunch of vendors for a bunch of vendors a bunch of commands um, that you can just download and use or use a wrapper uh, one of the wrappers I don't remember which one PyNTC I think uh, and you will get similar results or even more so uh, yeah okay so for the next time I will still think what exactly I want to show so probably I will um, stop on an uh, Napalm Ansible, NTC Ansible. Maybe also as part of this will be PyNTC and NTC templates. So that, uh, again, I also didn't try NTC at all, but I saw there are some interesting use cases like you can upgrade device by providing an image to NTC Ansible module and it will do this for you this seems to be much more interesting um yeah for today like as i already told uh, what, what they have is okay it's just i don't feel like this is the way i would like to go with the functionality that i saw um to too many limitations here I honestly expected that I can put a config and they will give me some model as a return of this config uh, some abstracted model rendering independent model kind of like yank but not necessarily yank uh, and then I can push or pull config using this and I didn't see that really. So even if not everything is supported, I really wanted to see that. So you can say, hey, I want to have VLANs 10 and 20, and then it will go ahead and do some magic for me. Probably I misunderstood something when I saw different demos and blog articles on that. Okay. Um, Thank you very much guys for joining the stream. Don't forget about the contest uh, that I described on previous stream and on the beginning of the stream to win a printed copy of the uh, of uh, of this book. Uh, Cisco Software Defined Access. Um, it actually describes SDA in technical details like what how Lisp uh, is working underneath and all of that stuff so this is actually um, it's not a marketing book it's actually a technology book so um, quite interesting read if you would like to know how SDA is working so if you'd like to get one uh, make sure to participate in the contest we will another uh, reminder that there is no stream next Sunday and there is no stream a Sunday afterwards um, because they will be in the US um, but uh, they probably will be there, there will be a stream not on Sunday after uh, a return on like 22nd or 23rd of May with that thank you very much guys and until next time <laughs>